Okay, so today it's time for us to go ahead and take care of all of this. Do 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 vegan prepper. Do 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 vegan prepper. All right, so we're going to be taking care of all of this today, like I said. So that means that we're going to be getting it into Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers. Um, but we're not putting them in buckets or anything. This is mainly about making sure that all of the bugs and the pests, the eggs get killed, which you do not need a freezer for. So contrary to popular belief, I see it all over the place. People buy their bulk dry goods and then they want to put everything in the freezer in order to kill eggs. And that is not necessary. In this book, Food Storage for Self-Sufficiency and Survival, on page 94 and 95, she discusses eliminating insects from dried foods. And basically, the gist of it is you can freeze and kill any larval insects or adult insects that are already present in your food, but it is not a method that's guaranteed to get rid of bug eggs, whereas depriving even eggs of oxygen for at least 14 days will kill them. So the only way to truly 100% eliminate pests from your food is to put them into an oxygen free environment. And so that is what we're planning on doing with these things, even though they are not necessarily getting stored for long-term use. These are about refilling the buckets that we're constantly working through, but I still wanna make sure that we're not dealing with any pest issues. So that's what we're doing today. All right, so the plan is basically just to take these items and put them into the large sized five gallon Mylar bags. So it turns out that for less dense items, such as pasta or beans, we would need about 3000 cc's worth of oxygen absorbers per bag. And then for the more dense items, such as rice, and then say like lentils would be a more dense item, we would need 2000 cc's of oxygen absorber in order to remove all of the oxygen from the bag. So we currently have 300 cc oxygen absorbers. So that means for the more, the less dense items we'll be using 10 total. And then for the more dense items we'll be using seven total. Yep. So here, let's go, show, go ahead and show you exactly how we are doing this. So the plan right now is to basically slide the entire paper bag uh, full of dry goods into the big Mylar bag. Um, Provident Prepper actually just posted a video uh, with this tip uh, to basically do just that. And you make a slit in the bag and put your oxygen absorbers inside the paper bag. And that way you don't have to dump all the stuff out. So uh, that was a handy timing because we were just getting ready to film this video. And now we don't have to dump all these bags out. And uh, this will make it a lot easier. So we're going to give that a try, see how it works. So these are the 5 mil thickness Mylar bags, 5 gallon, from Azure Standard. Um, this is where we purchased them from, and they obviously have a zipper top. So this is going to save us a ton of time on these smaller 25 pound bags but we are still going to show the process that we were going to go through with everything. <laughs> um, but we still do have to go through with these larger 50 pound bags of wheat berries. Um, and so we will still show that process as well. But yeah, this is going to save us so much time. So shout out and thank you to Provident Prepper for the tips. All right, so the procedure for filling the bags that we're going to have to actually cut the bag open to fill is just very simple. You take an empty five gallon bag and use that to hold the five gallon Mylar bucket or the Mylar bag in place. And we'll just get the bag opened and get that dumped in there using that to hold the bag in place. Having a strong helper <laughs> is a huge plus.
And obviously another plus to doing it the other way is that you don't have all of this dust everywhere. So <laughs> I guess we'll go ahead and get this set up. Okay, so once they are kind of already, you know, decently filled, it is possible to go ahead and just sort of stand them up and pour into them. But even still, I'm going to be studying these with my hands while uh, Mr. Vegan Prepper is taking care of pouring the rest of that wheat in. Okay, so for clarity's purposes, you will take the bag, the internal bag, and slit it. And then you place the oxygen absorbers inside of the internal bag if you are using this tip from Provident Pepper. That's what they said to do, so I'm passing that along. But really, that's an excellent video too. I will link it down below for you as well. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get these open now that we're ready to seal. toss seven each of these into the hard red wheat berries. And once those are in place, we need to go ahead and get them sealed. Okay, so squeeze as much extra air as possible out before sealing the bags, like just the zipper. And now, using kind of this old flat iron, it's very easy to go through and give the bag the final heat seal, which will hold everything in there. And then it is that easy. And then, Actually, it's another tip I realized all of a sudden that we picked up from Provident Prepper is we want to get these where we want them to go before the oxygen has, um, before these oxygen absorbers have done their work and basically turned these into a giant brick that will stay this shape forever. So now that every, once everything is sealed, we want to get them laying flat again on the shelf the way that we want them in their final spot <laughs> or else it won't happen. <laughs> so I wanted to show you guys something real quick here. Um, when you're using Mylar bags to store your food long term, make sure you're always using the heat seal and not the Ziploc because you can't trust the Ziploc to be a true oxygen barrier. And I'm illustrating this. I have these two bags stacked on top of each other and this one hasn't uh, fully had the oxygen pulled out of it from the oxygen absorbers and as you can see there is now an air pocket between the ziploc and the heat seal um, so it pushed air past that ziploc so uh, yeah the ziploc is not an oxygen barrier all right, so that is all taken care of now. So excited. Now, of course, this is not proper long-term storage because it's just in the Mylar bags and that's still vulnerable potentially to rodents or punctures. Uh, but it is an oxygen-free environment, which is what I was going for because I just want to make sure that as these sit waiting to get put into the working buckets, which we have all of our buckets here full of the food that we actually are going through and eating and then these are meant to be refills of some of these buckets uh, so these are not meant to be super long-term storage which would be stored in mylar bags oxygen absorbers and totes and totes and buckets and totes like everywhere <laughs> all over the place which we have our proper long-term storage but like i said this is ready this is just getting rid of the bugs to make sure that it is ready and not infested with anything by the time these bags get poured into our working buckets so just to reiterate it takes about two weeks of an oxygen free environment to kill all adults larval stage insects and eggs and when you think about it 
It makes a lot of sense because if eggs would be killed in the freezer 100%, how would pests overwinter, um, you know, through snow and freezing conditions? So it's really the oxygen that is the guaranteed killer of eggs and pests not freezing, which is also super good news. If you're like us, you're probably... Um, and you're blessed to have a chest freezer, you probably have already filled it, you know, because you're a prepper, so your freezer is full. So you don't have reason to prep, or you don't have room to prep the bulk goods that you're buying for your preps because you're a prepper and your freezer is already like prepped and full. So anyway, <laughs> it's great news. But um, at some point, I, I keep saying we will do a, a, a tour, but essentially, that is uh, like of the pantry area, but that is essentially kind of what we've got going on. Like I said, these are our working buckets that we are refilling. And every time I refill them, I put the dates that they were filled. So we're making sure everything is staying nice and fresh. And then as we work through those, we refill them. And um, yeah, so that's what works for us. And hopefully this video was helpful. And just let us know in the comments down below if you have anything else to add or anything else to say. And definitely go check out Provident Prepper. Uh, it's a great YouTube channel. We have learned quite a lot from them. And um, yeah, so as always, I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Bye.